when I was four. My parents took us away on a small sailing boat. We sailed around Europe for about two and a half years. And the rich background and, and the desire to travel, I think, was, a, was, a, was a, very, a strong point for them, and that's what they instilled in us as kids. And it, was never, it never seemed to lose its intensity. It never seemed to be never full of surprises, and it never seemed to be short on learning. magical place. It consists of a large mass of water with land scattered throughout its domains. On these areas of land, generally called countries, people live. All different kinds of people. What is considered a norm in one country is totally unacceptable. Because of his unconventional youth, Lawrence traveled the world. He lived in New York, Africa, Japan, and of course Australia. Different events took him to different countries. And as faith had it, he came to Portugal 11 years ago and started Tipe Valley. Algarve's surf and yoga retreat. In the middle of the mass tourism in the south of Portugal, he shows you don't need big white buildings and water-consuming golf greens to enjoy the beautiful nature of the west coast. The camp has been constructed from locally sourced products and is designed to reduce its footprint on its environment. Tipi Valley provides a simple, effective model for sustainable living. Here, you can experience what it's like to live using the direct energy of the sun. They protect and preserve precious resources, such as electricity and water. The camp is completely off the grid and is designed under sustainable principles. When I started Teepee Valley, the direction was very undefined. I found a beautiful location in a lovely place, very remote. And then circumstances were such that finances dried up and then I suddenly found myself living in Portugal without any money and um, I couldn't get back to Australia. So it was very much at that time a swim or sink motivation. At that period it was, it was things were quite lean and there was a ragtag uh, bohemian mix of volunteers, we were all working together, just basically doing very simple things, putting water piping in, and, and actually we were we were surfing here on this beach in the daytime, and then we were going back to the camp. We were doing yoga in the afternoon. We we're having a campfire, or a, you know, some basic food, and then we were doing some work in the mornings, and then the end of the day, we were sitting around and, and we we're in we we're in heaven. It was blissful. And we did this day after day, week in, week out. And then we didn't need any more. It was, and we'd say, this is, this is amazing. And that's literally how the surf and yoga program developed. It was just a continuation of the lifestyle uh -huh. that we had. It wasn't like, oh my God, there's a, a great business idea. And of course, then we refined it and we made it more organized and we marketed it somewhat. But essentially the program still is the same and it's still as great as, as it was because you're enjoying the outdoors and what could be better than practicing yoga, surfing, eating healthy food, spending time with a diverse and interesting group and being away from the technology just for a week. Not to say we have to be away from it forever, just for a week. I'm not anti-development, I don't think we should go back to the dark ages, but I, I, I do believe that, um, that there is the need to hold on to our natural resources. There is a, a, a real need to preserve and protect the oceans, the land, and hopefully combine um, that's, that sense of ecology and preservation into some type of model of which is somewhat in stream with the way things are at the moment. I think we can combine real life projects. I think there's 
so much scope nowadays to combine projects that have a little bit more value than just selling a commodity and are selling a commodity that is actually depleting the earth at the same time. I don't, I don't really see that logic in taking the resources and depleting them, creating a product and a financial system behind that product and then selling it on. I, I, I don't believe in that. I think we can just probably take a more of a collective ethical approach to how we look at conservation and how we look at preservation. And I think if you consider overpopulation or if you consider lack of water or resources or lack of, lack of or more of pollution, etc., etc., obviously stating the obvious, but, you know, it's, it, it, it is a relevant problem. And... I think anything we're doing to raise awareness of that and still developing a, a, a model that we can actually live without harming the environment. I think people are becoming aware of it, but it's like a rug, you know, and you, people just like push it under the rug. And, uh, you know, unless it's not in your face, unless it's not of imminent urgency, then I think we're really not really quite prepared to get out of our comfort zone, and, and myself included, I guess, in that respect. But um, yeah, we could all we could all do more.